All right, part three on foundation coffee roasting with SCA training. Uh, this will lead us into, we've already covered some of the historical developments of roasters and then uh, beginnings of the roast process and understanding how to roast coffee. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper into that now. Looked at from another angle, what are we really doing when we roast coffee? So as we heat the beans through conductive and convective heat, these are the two most common forms used in roasting. We are heating up the water molecules, especially inside those coffee beans. Now, remember what this is called? Yes, endothermic heat transfer. The beans are absorbing the heat internally. Now, as time proceeds, the water molecules eventually get so hot and active that they must emerge. They need to burst out of there. So they crack out of the bean and they crack the cellulose structure aka we call that first crack. So up to that first crack, moisture inside the drum will reach its highest point. When first crack begins, that moisture will start to burst forth and then we'll also let it exit through the hot air exhaust depending on how far that exhaust vent is opened. If we continue the roast, first crack will cease. That means the majority of the moisture has been released or at least that pressure is no longer uh, forcing it out of the coffee. And if permitted to reach second crack, what then will we notice? Well, if you roast your coffee to second crack, you'll notice, is it the sound from more moisture exploding? No, not so much. The sound is lighter, it's a little more crisp, and that's because at this stage, what's really uh, coming out is heat and gases, or carbon dioxide, that are being released. And while the smoke from the first crack will be whiter, there's more moisture involved, the smoke from second crack will be darker. It's more gaseous as the carbon dioxide is in, inside it. So here's a question. Will we always reach second crack in the roasting cycle? The answer is no. Many roasters and coffees will choose to end the roast before second crack. Of course, if their target coffee and flavor profile are at first crack, a medium, uh, a medium dark roast, they're not going to take it all the way to that second roast. So here are some of the stages of the roast. You can see these colors. There are so many color charts that you can look at. And while we can't identify one specific color to one specific stage, uh, we do follow this basic stage where the coffee is drying. So uh, it's uh, mo the heat is coming in, the coffee is drying, and there's a decrease in the density. If you've ever tried to bite a green coffee bean, it feels like a small rock. Okay, it's very dense. There's an enzymatic uh, reaction that's happening in the coffee. The acidity is increasing. Okay, we're starting to caramelize sugars as the temperatures increase. That will increase the sweetness, as we said before. We're also increasing the body and the solubility of the coffee. Uh, later on, as we continue, we're going to start decreasing the acidity. Now here we have decreased sweetness. That's really the perception of sweetness because the increased bitterness perception is so profound. So just as we go through the stage of the roast, that's a helpful step-by-step -step understanding. Now, we need to uh, focus a little bit on commercial roasting as well. Not too much, but specialty versus commercial roasting. So what's the major difference in roast? It's time. Okay, we're still using similar equipment. We've all got coffee beans, but commercial coffee roasting is all about speed and efficiency. It's something we can also call flash roasting. Okay, so one to three minutes to roast and toast and burn that coffee as quick as possible uh, while still achieving a roasted profile, right? A roasted flavor to the coffee. However, with specialty roast, what we want to do is we want to optimize flavor characteristics. And that may be, depending on the roaster or the volume or the size, uh, 8 to 18 minutes. It's a very deliberate process. Okay, And uh, commercial roasting, it's all about efficiency. It's about money and time. So recently, as an anecdote, I was reading on, on the outside of some Keurig boxes in the office, uh, Keurig coffee cap capsules, I won't say the brand, but... Um, they were all boasting. Okay, so we had a light roast and a medium roast and then a dark roast. All of them boasted, even the light, that it was slow roasted bold flavor. 
Okay, so even at a commercial level, even those people promoting coffee capsules for my office Keurig coffee machine is not my office choice, but that's what the boss has provided us. Um, there are uh, commercial roasters that know they need to communicate something besides flash roasting that they're doing something slow and roasty and they know it's they know it's the right thing to do okay so uh, I'll step down off that high horse sorry if that got a little political but um, controlling heat application and cooling okay uh, and then chemical milliard reactions so Anyone who's studied a little bit into chemistry, you may have heard uh, the name Milliard and the Milliard reaction. Uh, now, this is advanced for intermediate and professional levels, but I want to introduce basically. You'll notice uh, two major reactions with these two, uh, two pictures. One um, is the color changes, right? So the beans change just like that toasted bread changes. Now, as the seed of a fruit of coffee is composed of numerous complex proteins, simple sugars, complex carbohydrates, amino acids, fibers, oils, and so much more. The most notable thing we can discuss are the sugars as they develop in the Milliard reaction, and then later the Strecker degradation. degradation. All right, so why does my bread turn brown when I put it in the toaster oven? Is that because I'm burning it, burning the flour? No, initially it's because it gets dry, just like we dry out our coffee beans, and then because those sugars are reaching a certain temperature where they break down and begin to caramelize, right? So that's also why toasted bread can have a sweeter and uh, very different distinct taste from regular bread. So uh, the internal bean temperature now that we're looking at, where, where would that be? It's going to be kind of like the sugar melting point. So when we reach that 200 to 220 degrees uh, Celsius, um, those internal bean temperatures are cooking the bean from the inside out. And we need to get it out, okay, so we're talking about cooling now. When we get it out of the hot drum, we need to cool it as quickly as possible. So we want to avoid destroying any of the desired acids and sugars and flavors. And what can happen is if that bean, which is so hot, just continues to sit and it's not cooled properly or fast enough, it can become very flat in flavor. It actually gets a baked impression, just a flat, boring, baked coffee is what we call it. And it's a roasting defect. It'll have a bready impression. Okay, so we have a picture of bread here to remind you what baked coffee will uh, be similar to and we classify it on the cupping table as a roast defect. So what kind of a time there you know is there a rule of thumb that's stated for cooling? Uh, you'll hear that five minutes is the maximum post cooling temperature permitted for specialty coffee. Now we can also say that the faster the better because that just helps you nail that target roast profile that you're trying to get to. And what is considered cooled? Uh, you should be able to touch it by your hand. You should be able to take some coffee in your hand and feel that it's, you know, it's comfortable to hold. It's it's maybe a little above room temperature. Uh, it will be above room temperature because it came out of the roaster. But when it reaches a lower temperature like that, it's not going to be baking itself internally. And it shouldn't be piled up in a big pile because it'll also uh, bake itself in that pile of coffee. Now, uh, we want to understand some of these different roast effects and the different steps in the process. So, uh, a lot of colors going on on this screen here, but this is a snapshot of uh, roasting software that I would often use, mostly for data logging, not for controlling the roast. But you'll notice uh, from the bottom left to right, we've got a timer. And then from the left side, bottom to top, we have a temperature. Okay, so this first point will be the charge temperature. And that's basically at time zero when I drop that coffee in. And um, when I drop that coffee in, you know, it's that's a room temperature cool green bean entering a, uh, you know, 180 degree drum, depending on what I'm roasting at. And uh, these temperatures are recorded here in Celsius because this was roasting that was done and recorded in China. Um, as that green coffee is in the drum, what it's doing is it's 
it's acclimating it's actually warming up and it's bringing the temperature of the drum down too so there's this rapid decline to a little turn here where which we call the turning point and on various charts or graphs you'll see a TP for turning point now that's when uh, the rapid deceleration stops and it kind of flat lines and then it'll actually start going up okay so uh, from the time, when, when does that endothermic reaction happen or uh, endothermic process? Basically, the, um, the point where you drop the coffee into the drum uh, all the way up to the point where first crack should be starting. That's that endothermic uh, phase where the coffee is taking in heat okay, before it's released any heat. Now, there's a point here that you'll often see in a roasting chart, and as you're as you're roasting where there's a there's kind of a slowdown and uh, this is where a lot of the the initial heat transfer has already occurred a lot of the heat from inside the drum and the drum wall and the fire that you charged with uh, where we're going to see this green to yellow change and so there's a s slight hump a slowdown in the rate of rise and that's very common and typically that's a green to yellow turning point not perfectly science but you'll notice and then later, uh, first crack. Now that was identified by me. I had to hit the hit the timer when first crack started. But what you want to be aware of is as you're reaching that first crack point, you're going to want to be slowing down the application of heat because what happens? You're going to enter into an exothermic time period where the beans are actually releasing heat and you've got heat from underneath. Now you don't want to you don't want to slow it down too much because what's going to happen? You're going to run out of energy to push to the end of your roast. So caramelization, uh, caramelization is really happening for a long process here. Um, it's going to be after that initial drying phase, after the coffee starts to turn yellow, and then as it starts turning brown and cinnamon colors, that's often a time when those sugars really start developing and uh, it'll happen all the way to the end of the roast. Different people will have different definitions on where caramelization does or doesn't occur and um, on this roast I took it to second crack okay so second crack is noted by the pink area and you'll see there's a gap in there so my first crack stopped and uh, when it stopped there was kind of a jump in the heat uh, the this this is common right and so uh, you have this expulsion of um, moisture and then there's a slowing period and then you'll enter into second crack where it's releasing gases, carbon dioxide. And then uh, I ended it, right? I didn't, I'm in control of the end line, the 12 minute, 47 second mark. And uh, the drop temperature, 229 degrees Celsius. And then the roast time and completion, that's also recorded here. So uh, lots of different things to discuss, but uh, there are effects that happen at each of these stages, and you should be able to label them or recognize them on a roasting chart. Okay, so this green line, uh, another thing that you'll hear uh, is the rate of rise. So the speed of this green line or the, the steepness of the green line will be classified as rate of rise. And so your teacher should spend some time um, manually calculating that and there's usually a formula right there on your roast form. Um, now if uh, first crack initiates that exothermic phase then what should I do to slow down my heat at the curve? I should be adjusting bef just before I enter into first crack so I need to be predictive in my roasting. And then what happens if I don't turn down the heat at first crack? What happens is I'm going to have two heat sources. I'm going to have all that underlying fire uh, to the drum. And then I also am going to have this major increase. The rate of rise will spike because uh, the beans are also releasing a lot of heat. So I'll have convection and conduction all happening at the same time. Now, there's lots of different software out there. Uh, I believe this one was Roast Master. Uh, but you can look in your app store or uh, area of choice. Now we're going to finish up next time and uh, part four will take us to the home stretch.